Ken, uh, you suppose you could turn the earth a little bit so we could get a little bit more uh, than just water? Roger, Levin. I don't think we got much control over that. Looks like you'll have to settle for the water. It's worth noting that during both the first Apollo 11 telecast and also the Little Gem, Charlie Duke comments on the TV quality, comparing it to the telecasts from Apollo 10. Hello, 11. Houston, the Goldstone TV said that uh, when you get a sharp vertical line on a picture uh, where the horizontal banding goes across, it does appear to bend it slightly. The same as uh, Apollo 10, they said. Looks okay to them, over. Bye bye. Okay, my comments were my comments were from Goldstone that the they see no white spots uh, as we saw in ten. Looks like the ATC is working real well. The F twenty two looks good. Over. Do you see any resemblance between the card and the guy holding the card? Uh, now that you mention it. Bart Sabrell also picked up on this, and during the production of Astronauts Gone Wild questioned John Young about it. I'm Bart with ABC Digital. How are you doing? Um, I was given a classified tape from the Apollo program that's 31 years old. It's an unedited reel, including outtakes from the mission. Hmm. Uh, it's got about 20 takes of a single shot of the mission. What mission? Apollo 11. Yes. And the photography is being forged in the mission. They're faking a shot of being halfway to the moon. And they refer to you on the tape as a shot that was done during Apollo 10, where you put a transparency over the window and move the camera of the Earth and move the camera back away from the window, turn off the lights in the spacecraft, and appeared to be halfway to the moon when in fact they were in Earth orbit. Huh, really? Yeah, and they said it was the same way that you did it on Apollo 10. I decided to do my own investigation on this. So I purchased the Apollo 10 DVD set from Spacecraft Films. Indeed, there were many, many telecasts showing a far-off Earth. The first one has been logged as being shot five hours and six minutes into the flight. As we watch this, first of all, the horizontal banding we saw in the little gem is most obvious. Second, the exterior of the lunar module Snoopy is clearly visible. So the image of Earth in this transmission could not possibly be a transparency clipped to the window. No astronauts are seen in this telecast. The video seems to run continuously, that is, up until it nears the end, when the camera suddenly cuts. Negative, uh, it, we got about, uh, oh, quite a ways to go before we, uh, fill up our screen, screen uh, Tom, uh, it's, uh, like Note also that during this camera cut, Charlie Duke says, we got quite a ways to go before we fill up our screens. It's uh, really beautiful. Okay, uh, Houston, I got a question. Does that picture fill up your whole screen now? I want to correlate it with our monitor. Uh, negative. It, uh, it, we got about uh, oh, quite a ways to go before we uh, fill up our screen, screen uh, Tom. Uh, it's, uh, it's like about the size of a, uh, a basketball or so. To, uh, it's pretty hard. A quick look at the Apollo 10 transcript logs this statement at 5 hours, 17 minutes and 57 seconds into the flight. And it clearly documents Duke's statement as a single sentence. Uh, negative. It, uh, it, we got about uh, oh, quite a ways to go before we uh, fill up our screen, screen uh, Tom. Uh, it uh, looks like about the size of a, uh, a basketball or so. To, uh, it's pretty hard. This means that the audio dialogue uh, is running continuously, the but the video feed they are receiving is edited. Uh, it, we got about uh, oh, quite a ways to go before we uh, fill up our screen, screen uh, Tom. Uh, it's, 
Looks like about the size of it. The second transmission from 10 is logged as being shot 7 hours and 11 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, yes, indeed. If you could During the 7-11 transmission, right or left, something gets in the way between the camera and the earth. More, the it's clearly the wrong shape to be the edge of the window. Shortly afterwards, the camera cuts. Moments before the camera cuts, Mission Control reports, There you go, 10. That's good. After this cut, he reports, Right, and we've got the North Pole on the right side of our screens down here. There you go, 10. That's good. Alright, and uh, we've got the, the North Pole on the right of our screen down here, and uh, the Atlantic Ocean... With the the NASA transcript logs the respective mission time occurrences for these two statements as 7.12.06 and 7.12.15, or 9 seconds apart, which is exactly the same time they occur on the Spacecraft Films DVD. There you go, Tim, that's good. Right, and now uh, we've got the, the North Pole on the right of our screen down here, and uh, it's another case of live audio with edited video footage. Later in the same telecast, right Houston right. Control requests an interior right. shot. Houston, but suspiciously, Roger. the camera blacks out before we go inside the capsule, and vice versa when we go back out again. Apollo 10, Houston. Uh, we've completed the uplink. You can go back to block. Roger, we're blocked. Roger. Okay, uh, you're okay. coming through on our block. Black and white monitor now. Uh, very well. We'll see the color in a minute. I'll take it back over here at my left window and show the earth again. Roger, your tent. Okay, then uh, we're getting the Earth now. Uh, we've got uh, the Terminator uh, to our left, and it looks like the, the South Pole on the top of the screen. The third video was shot at 27 hours into the flight. The camera looks continuously at the Earth for a little more than 11 minutes before the Apollo 10 crew bring the camera in for interior shots. Okay, we're going to take you inside. That's probably been said before. As with the previous telecast, the view blacks out before we see the inside of the capsule. Okay, we're picking up your transmission from inside now. It's interesting to note that during this particular telecast, the astronauts were doing their best to prove they were on their way to the moon. This is a real testimonial to prove you were there in case there are any doubters. People want to know what kind of men go to the moon. There's a good look at one right there. Could you believe it? Some people still don't. Whilst there is no question that they are in genuine zero gravity, the one thing they never did to prove their distance from the Earth was keep the camera rolling as they pointed it out the window. Watch as the lights go out again when the astronauts decide to get another shot of the Earth. Well, you want music? Well, we'll give you some music at the conclusion here. Okay, we'll take you back outside now. 
Roger. Well, Tom shows you that. Uh, we've got uh, another little rendition we'd like to put your way. Roger, we're standing by. Here it comes. This, this is just uh, the, so that you guys uh, don't uh, get too excited about the TV and forget what your job is down there. We're ready for what we're about to receive. The fourth TV broadcast came in at 47 hours ground elapsed time. It starts off with interior shots of the crew, during which the astronauts show off their star charts. As with the Apollo 11 Little Gem, this particular video has cuts throughout the interior scenes, like so. Just before the first cut, the Capcom states, We'd like you to go to high gain to medium width and then back to narrow. After the camera cut, Gene Cernan asks, How's that? Uh, Roger, uh, you know, our signal strength is down about 10 uh, dB. We'd like you to uh, go uh, high gain to uh, medium width uh, and then back to narrow. Over. How's that? Stand by. Now it's a matter of finding the portions in the transcript. I did find the passage, but discrepancies immediately showed up. This camera cut occurred less than two minutes into the video. How's that? Stand by. And Spacecraft Films claims this telecast began at the 47 hour mark. The Apollo 10 transcripts, however, logs this interaction at the 47 hour, 4 minute and 22 second mark. Remembering that Spacecraft Films claims this video began at the 47 hour mark, at 15 seconds into this telecast, Gene Sennan says the words, interior-wise. Interior-wise, uh, we're giving him a look at the uh, star If chart. spacecraft films are being truthful, Sennan therefore made this statement at the 47 hour, 15 second mark. Yet the transcript logs this statement at the 47 hour, 3 minute and 15 second mark. The transcript also reveals that some 3 minutes earlier, Cernan confirmed that the camera was rolling. Moments later, Charlie Duke acknowledges that the signal is being received. This means Spacecraft Films excluded the first 3 minutes of the 47 hour telecast. It's also worth noting that according to the transcript, after Mission Control's high gain to medium request, Sunan replies, OK, it's medium, and now I'll go to narrow. The Capcom says, Roger. Then, and only then, does Sunan ask, how's that? These two quotes were absent on the Spacecraft Films disc. Instead, all we got was a camera uh, You know, our signal strength is down about 10 uh, dB. We'd like you to uh, go uh, high gain to uh, medium width uh, and then back to narrow. Over. How's that? Stand by. The second cut occurs while Cernan holds the Apollo 10 patch to the camera. Charlie Duke says, Takes me a while to catch up on those things, moments before the camera cuts. After it does cut, Sonan replies, I think that's where we are. Charlie, if I told you about that, right. Takes me a little while to catch on to those things. I think that's where we are. 